Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about G1, Calculate Velocity from Time and Distance. So before we get started, I want to introduce you all to the speed triangle here on the bottom right hand corner. Um, the three variables are S, D, and T, where S is referring to speed. Um, mathematically speaking, it can also be calculating velocity because the only difference between velocity and speed is that Velocity includes direction. So mathematically, they both solve out the same. Um, second is distance, which is D, and letter T refers to time. So in order to use this wonderful speed diagram on the right hand side, what you do is that, um, first of all, you make a triangle, you split into three sections, the letter D is always on top, and then T and S can be side by side, doesn't really matter which order. In order to figure out what the formula for one of the variables is, what you have to do is this. If you want to solve for speed, you cover speed, so I'm just going to like blot this out. Uh, what you'll notice is that you have D and T left over, and that basically tells you what the formula for speed is, where speed is equal to distance divided by time. Now, this can be done for the other ones as well. So if you want to say solve for distance, you cover up distance. And what you'll notice is that you have T and S side by side. So when T and S are side by side, that means you need to multiply those two together. So this is equal to speed times time. And last but not least, we need to solve out for time. So for time, you need to cover up the T whenever we have left is what we solve for. So you notice D is on top, S is on bottom. So that means mathematically speaking, time is equal to distance divided by speed. Now on to some practice problems. So for G1 specifically, the only thing we're doing is calculating velocity. As you mentioned earlier, velocity and speed mathematically solve out the same. So speed or velocity is equal to d over t which is distance over time so in this uh question here we have two units inside the sentence we have 22.4 seconds and we have 840 meters so to solve for speed you would have to put distance on top which is 840 meters that's your that's d this is t so distance is 840 meters shorthand for meters is m divide that by 2.4 seconds the shorthand for seconds being s your answer would then be 350 meters per second and that's is what we'll put down as our answer in the box right there cool next question uh, once again we're looking for a couple of values we got 63 meters and we have 3.5 seconds so once again the distance is d which is 63 meters time is seconds which will be labeled as t so speed is equal to 63 meters over 3.5 seconds which is equal to 18 meters per second and we'll put that answer in right there moving on to stage two so stage two only has one special little caveat you have to keep in mind which is that instead of two values it actually gives you a total of three values or three units let's scan the speed formula which can be interchanged as velocity is distance over time so that means we need to figure out which one's a speed unit which one's a distance unit which one is a time unit so 20 meters, that would be distance. 0 0.5 minutes, that would be your time. 58 meters per minute is actually a speed unit, so we're going to ignore that unit there.
and we're going to use the other two to solve for the question. So speed is equal to 20 meters divided by 0 0.5 minutes and your answer should be equal to 40 meters per minute. Alright, next question. Once again, there are three units in this question and one of them is not useful to us. So, once again, 5.4 seconds is a unit of time. 2.4 meters per second is a unit of speed, which means this is not useful. And 8.1 meters is a unit of distance. So we'll use 8.1 divided by 5.4. So 8.1 meters divided by 5.4 seconds. The answer is 1.5 meters per second, and that's what we'll put in the answer box right there. Okay, moving on to stage three. Stage three has a tricky little gimmick, which I will go over in just a bit. So you'll notice that it has its typical um, unit of distance, which is 4,680 meters. There is a time unit of 12 minutes. Now there is one extra special thing here, which is it says one third, which I will highlight and then I will solve that out. One third means one over three. All right. So it's asking specifically for the whale's velocity. You also know that it swam one third of the distance to the bay in 12 minutes. So that means you have to take this value of 4,680 meters and you have to divide that by three in order to get the total amount of distance it covered in 12 minutes. And this is equal to 1,560 meters or 1,560 meters. You would then have to take that value and divide that by 12 minutes. And if you do that, your answer comes out to 130 meters per minute and that is what you'll put down in the answer box right there all right next question once again same five seconds 100 meters one third of that time now let's see what the question is asking the question is asking what was her velocity in one third of that time so this is distance this is time it's saying only one third of that time was useful so that means you have to divide the time by three so 75 divided by three is equal to 25 seconds so using that number you're gonna have to solve it into the formula again so speed is equal to 100 meters divided by 25 seconds okay and your answer should then be four and I'll do one last question in stage three just to make sure you guys got the hang of it so 9,600 kilometers two hours and then one third of the way so what was the jet's velocity is what we're solving for it flew one third of the way to the airspace in two hours. So that means this is only a third of the actual distance was actually covered in that much time. So I'm going to have to take 9,600 kilometers and divide that by three. That gets us 3,200 kilometers. Then you plug that into the formula, so 3,200 kilometers divided by 2 hours, and that should get you 1,600 kilometers per hour. All right, and there you have it, guys. That's all I need to know in order to uh, tackle this IXL. So hopefully this helped you out a bit to figure out how to do that and hopefully you guys have a good time solving these through
I'm just going to do this last one quickly. 150 over 2 hours. That should get just 75. 